Good afternoon, Lifeway Church family, <clears throat> and just want to welcome you to a uh, recording um, that I'm doing this afternoon of our sermon um, during worship this morning. We're uh, record, re-recording this because uh, the Zoom platform, for some reason, didn't pick up uh, my sermon today. And if you're wondering what in the world is a Zoom platform, well, it's a technology that we're blessed with that we're going to use to stay engaged as a church family during uh, these times um, to keep ourselves safe, but also flexibility that allows us to be able to reach more people and, and share Christ's love. And so please join us on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We uh, love to have you. And at 10 o'clock, you get a Zoom link uh, from Grace Me during the week. And you check in with that Zoom link and it'll get you right to us and be able to hopefully see each other. Or if you just want to Come in and just to listen you're able to do that without video but it really is a, a good time as we discovered this morning to engage and uh, to see each other and to fellowship so around 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings we're gonna start with uh, just a fellowship time and checking in and then around 10 15 we'll start doing prayer requests and so uh, start off great this morning and thanks Grace Marie for all the wonderful help she's doing and also to all of you who joined us and so this sermon, once again, is uh, a repeat a recording uh, for um, those that weren't able to get on Zoom. And uh, what I'm talking about is just in face of uncertainty is that God, our Heavenly Father, gives us peace. And we can go in peace in a panic-stricken world. And we can do that because Jesus Christ is the great overcomer. Will you join me in prayer? Father, thank you so much for your love, for your care. Thank you that we are here today and just worship you. Thank you for uh, the technology we we're able to use. And we praise you and love you. And Father, that you be glorified in all that we do. Guide and lead our world more than ever before in needs. Your love, your peace. And Father, help us to share that as a church, as a king, your kingdom, Lord, to share that with others and to go in peace because you are the great overcomer. Well, we're facing another uncertainty this week. What's going to happen? What's going on? You know, our country, the pandemic, and all these things. And what we really have got to do is we've got to pause and praise God and thank Him that our strength, our security, our hope, His love for us, our future is not dependent upon our circumstances. It's on Him and Him alone. And so to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that gives us security and peace. One of the things that um, here lately on the news is, is uh, the term uh, pandemic fatigue or fatigue, yeah, pandemic fatigue. And just sharing with you that you talk with a lot of people and people, I mean, I'm tired of this. This is, uh, I'm weary. And just to share that you're not alone is that many people are, stressed out about what's going to happen, what's the next step, what's going on, and just not being able to go out and do things. And I want to share with you that as the church, as followers of Christ, we cannot allow circumstances or uncertainty to dictate our hope, to dictate the power that Jesus Christ has within us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit resides within us. And a powerful verse that Jesus said and <clears throat> shared with the apostles the night before he was betrayed and crucified is found in John 16, verse 33, and it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in the world. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That is a powerful message and a blessing. That power has gone out through centuries. It gone out from Jesus, the example that Jesus Christ would lead that night he was betrayed and crucified. And also his challenge to disciples that extends to all of us throughout eternity that in the midst that Jesus went through, he went through the cross, he went through suffering and pain for our sin, and that he provided a way for our salvation to have a connection back to God, to be able to spend eternity with Jesus Christ, have a relationship with him. And it's that power also through the Holy Spirit that is extended throughout eternity. And so today we're going to look at what Jesus Christ went through and how he's the great overcomer and how that power has extend to people. One of those faithful people that we look at and someone who was a hero uh, during World War II and, and beyond to the Jewish people is Corrie ten Boom. 
and just sharing with you some excuse me some quotes in some of her popular books. She has a book called The Hiding Place or the uh, movie The Hiding Place that I highly recommend and um, other devotionals and they're wonderful and just great challenges to us. And I want to just share just some of the quotes and a little bit of history about her. <clears throat> Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Corey Ten Boom writes that and shares that, and she's someone that we can just listen to and understand. Well, it's powerful because of what she went through in protecting the Jewish people during the German Holocaust. In May 1942, Corey Ten Boom and her family opened their home to protect Dutch Jews from the Nazi persecution. On February 28th, however, of 1944, after two years of protecting Jewish, <coughs> Jewish immigrants from from the Nazi, the Nazi persecution, excuse me, a Dutch informant by the name of Jan Vogel told the Nazis about the Ten Boom's family work. At around 12.30 p.m. of that day, the Nazis arrested the entire Ten Boom family. Corey Ten Boom, her whole family, her and her sister were thrust into a concentration camp. And, and in the midst of all that, she shares a quote that stands out Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. Imagine sharing something like that, after going through the awful things she's went through, even protecting and, and helping the Jewish people. As Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. And the Ten Moon family are facing that, that persecution, the homeless. Eventually, Corey Ten Boom would lose her sister during the, the time they were in the concentration camp. And yet what we're going to see is just the power of forgiveness and the power that God has for us. It's not about our circumstances, but it's about, it's about the power of Jesus Christ. And so we see this example, just as you and I can take as Corey Ten Boom is saw the example in what Jesus Christ did the night before he betrayed in John chapter 18, scripture says, when talking about Jesus, when he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I want to pause there and for us to look at and realize that Jesus knew what was going to happen to him. The torture, the betrayal, the awful death. But yet, he went out to do them. He didn't let them come get him. He, they didn't come and drag Jesus to prison. He went out and met them face to face. Why? Because he loves you. He loves me. And he went to the cross for us. Jesus himself would say, No greater love hath any man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus Christ did for us, for eternity. For you and I to have a hope and a future right now and beyond, because he loves and cares for us. I want to share with you that when I look at the strength and the courage that Jesus had, it inspires me. It helps me to move forward. Say, my Lord and Savior knew what was going to happen to him, yet he went out there. And then we move forward to see the power that Jesus had and still has today. King Uwai says, I am he, Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with him. And listen to this. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. At any moment, Jesus could have said, I'm done. You're all destroyed. Goodbye. <laughs> that was it. But he didn't because he loves us and he cares for us and became the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary for our sins. The praise God didn't stop there, but yet we need to realize and understand just the, just the awfulness, the things that Jesus went through, and yet he's our great overcomer. Continuing on, Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you're looking for me, then let these men go. This happens so that the words he had spoken will be fulfilled. I have not lost one of these that you have gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. 
Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Just like Peter, too often when crises or things come, I try to live the lie. Oh, I got to do something. I got to take care of it. And that causes anxiety. That causes you know, anger and frustration. When, first and foremost, I need to stop and pray to the great overcomer. Say, Lord Jesus, here it is. Too often you and I think that prayer is a last resort when it is the most important thing that we can do is to stop and pray. And so Jesus told Peter, put your sword away because the plan is not, it's not about you trying to rescue or take care of things. The plan is me rescuing you. Even though it doesn't look the way that you want it to, Peter, this is what's going to happen. And it's going to be amazing. Just trust me. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, excuse me, and high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Corey Ten Boom was arrested. Her sister, her father, ten days after they were arrested, her father would die in prison. Here, her and her sister were in this concentration camp. Here, Jesus Christ was taken, taken to be tortured and to be and hung on a cross. And yet, he says, take heart, I have overcome the world. Are you thinking things are pretty bleak? Are you thinking things are just, I don't see what's going to happen? I want to share with you is that God is not done and he's on the throne. And it's powerful because his power, if we allow, changes us. To be able to change the world. First and foremost, it's changing us, changing us inside. And so it would be years later that Corey Timmy would be released from prison, released, she'd be freed after World War II, and she would return home. And she'd begin a great ministry to the Jewish people that were still needing help. And, and also, she would open a home for Dutch informants, people that like portrayed her family, but they couldn't find any work because people looked at them as traitors. And yet she opened her home to them to help them and to forgive them. She would go on as, as things would get popular about her work and her forgiveness and, th and, and she would have a ministry where she would speak and write books. And there's one powerful thing about the power that we really need to see beyond our circumstances, the power of overcoming and moving forward is when she meets one of the German guards that was at a concentration camp where her, and her, where her sister were and where her sister eventually passed away. She writes this. It was a church in Munich that I saw him, a balding, heavyset man in a gray overcoat, a brown felt hat clutched between his hands. People were filing out of the basement room where I had just spoken, moving along the rows of wooden chairs to the door at the rear. It was 1947 I had come from Holland to defeat Germany with the message that God forgives. It was the truth they needed most to hear in that bitter, bombed out land. And I gave them my favorite mental picture. Maybe because the sea is never far from a Hollander's mind, I like to think that that's where forgiveness, forgiveness of sin, where forgiven sin is thrown into the sea. She states, when we confess our sins, I said, God cast them into the deepest ocean, gone forever. The solemn faces stared back at me, not quite daring to believe. There was never questions after a talk in Germany in 1947. People stood up in silence, and silence collected their wraps. In silence, they left the room. And that's when I saw him, working his way forward against the others. One moment I saw the overcoat and the brown hat, the next a blue uniform and a visor cap with its skull and crossbones. It came back with a rush, the huge room with its harsh overhead lights, the pathetic pile of dresses and shoes in the center of the floor, the shame of walking naked past this man. I could see my sister's frail form ahead of me, ribs sharp beneath the parched skin. Betsy, how thin you were. Betsy and I had been arrested for concealing Jews in our home during the Nazi occupation of Holland. This man had been a guard at Ravensbrück concentration camp where we were sent. Now he was in front of me, hand thrust out, 
A fine message, Fraulein. How good it is to know that, as you say, all our sins are at the bottom of the sea. And I, who had spoken so glibly of forgiveness, fumbled in my pocketbook rather than take that hand. He would not remember me, of course. How could he remember one prisoner among thousands of women? But I remembered him and the leather crop swinging from his belt. It was the first time since my release that I had been face to face with one of my captors, and my blood seemed to freeze. You mentioned Raven's book in your talk, he was saying. I was a guard there. No, he did not remember me. But since that time, he went on, I have become a Christian. I know God. He has forgiven me for the cruel things I did there, but I would like to hear it from your lips, Fraulein. Again, the hand came out. Will you forgive me? And I stood there, I whose sins had every day to be forgiven and could not. Betsy had died in that place. Could he erase her slow, terrible death simply for the asking? It could not have been many seconds that he stood there, hand held out, but to me it seemed as hours that I wrestled with the most difficult thing I had ever had to do. For I had to do it, I knew that. The message that God's forgiveness has a prior condition that we forgive those who have injured us. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, Jesus says, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. I knew it was not only a command of a God, but a daily experience. Since the end of the war, I had a home in Holland for victims of Nazi brutality. Those who were able to forgive their enemies were able to return to the outside world and rebuild their lives no matter what the physical scars. Those who nursed their bitterness remained invalids. It was as simple and as horrible as that. And still I stood there with the coldest clutching by my heart. But forgiveness is not an emotion. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of heart. Jesus, help me. I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling. And so, woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into the stretched out that was stretched out to me. And as I did, an incredible thing took place. The current started to my shoulder, raced down my arm, sprang into our joined hands, and then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bring tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried, with all my heart. As Jesus was led out to be crucified, Scripture said that he was placed between two thieves. And Scripture shares this with us. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there. along with criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching and the rulers were sneered, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and others. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, Since you and I are under the same sentence, we are punished justly. For we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. Corey Ten Boom, in her experience with a soldier, wrote this phrase, 
and I want to share it with you again. Forgiveness is an act of the will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. More than a pandemic, more than uncertainty of our country, more than whatever's going on in our lives, our world needs the love and peace of Jesus Christ. And the promise that we see that what Jesus Christ did on the cross at Calvary, what he has done for you and I, that power, where he has risen again because he's our Lord and Savior. What I want to share with you is that you and I can live, can go through this world in peace because Jesus is the overcomer. He has overcome death. There are loved ones. I think of friends who I've lost, not lost, excuse me, who have, who have died and gone on to heaven recently. And I have this power. I shared with a friend of mine, his daughter, who my dear friend passed away this summer. And I shared with his daughter yesterday, you know, the hope is I'm going to see your dad again. That's amazing. And that's, I look forward to that. What I'm sharing with you this, this afternoon is this, is that we can go in peace and share Jesus Christ's love. No matter what the circumstances, because of the power that God has given us, this Holy Spirit, because he is the overcomer. There's power in that. And so we look at this, that praise God. Things didn't end on the cross. Jesus' attitude of, of taking that thief to heaven with him, asking forgiveness for those on the cross, that is where Corrie ten Boom was able to get her power. Jesus would eventually, his resurrected form, physically risen from the dead, would appear to the disciples. And scripture states this. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. The risen Lord and Savior appeared physically to them and said, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Well, wait a minute. Lord, um, you know, what do we do? You know, just like, just crucified and all this stuff and everything. Nope. Or how about us? You know, Lord, there's all these things going on in our world. What's going on? God says, no, I got it taken care of. Peace be with you. And when we have that strength, that security, that comfort, that peace, we are able to begin to say, okay, Lord, who else needs this? Who else needs to hear about your love? They're out there. You know them. God has some amazing things planned and ways for you to share his love. And he can give that to you with you and I knowing that his peace is with us. After the war, Cory ten Boom returned to the Netherlands to set up a rehabilitation center in Bloemendal. The refugee, house, <coughs> the refugee house concentration camp survivors and exclusively sheltered jobless Dutch who had been collaborators with the Germans during the occupation until 1950 when it accepted anyone in need of care. She found out her nephew, Kik Ten Boom, had died in a concentration camp. She returned to Germany in 1946 and met with and forgave two Germans who had been employed at Ravensbrück, one of whom had been particularly cruel to Betsy. Ten Boom went on to travel the world as a public speaker, appearing in more than 60 countries. She wrote many books during this period. As Corey Ten Boom, instead of giving into bitterness, she took God's power that you and I have and was able to share that with others in remarkable ways. She shares this when a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark. You don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You sit still and trust the engineer. You and I need to be about trusting our engineer today. The world needs to see that we're not people who are going to just jump off the train when it gets dark. 
We are people that trust our Lord and Savior because he is faithful and true. A final quote I want to share with you from Corey Tim Boom is this. Let God's promises shine on your problems. The measure of a life, after all, is not its duration, but its donation. It is my prayer that in spite of everything going around our country and world, that you and I realize that we can live, go through this world in peace because Jesus is the great overcomer. In this world, we will have trouble, says our Lord and Savior. But take heart. I have overcome the world. I believe the best days are ahead of us. I believe that God has amazing things planned for us. How for us to be able to go in his peace. And just as the Father sent Jesus, so he sends us to share his love and to go in peace. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for this day, for the amazing things you have planned and what you're doing, what you're about to do. Father, you are in control. You can heal our land quickly. And Lord, if you choose to tarry that, I ask that even in the midst of whatever's going on, that we will share your love with others. Guide and lead and go before us, Father. Thank you that we can overcome this because you are the great overcomer. Help us to seek you and follow you with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Hey, God bless you all, and we look forward to seeing you Tuesday night um, for our Bible study time, our group time, and also we're going to start a, a small group on Wednesday um, mornings around 10 o'clock, and we'll, try and we'll send the link out to that, and then uh, we'll hopefully see you next Sunday. Look forward to that, and uh, engagement at 10 o'clock, fellowship time, and 10-15 uh, prayer ministry, and so we love you dearly. God bless you all. Bye-bye.